Ladies and gentlemen, I am John Pace, a member of the R.M. Santilli Foundation and the chairman of the World Lecture Series on Hadronic Mathematics, Mechanics, and Chemistry. It is a pleasure and honor for me to present Lecture 1B by Professor Ruggiero Maria Santilli on another fundamental aspect of contemporary science, the identification of the limitations of quantum mechanics for more and more complex physical conditions occurring in nature. The difficulty of this lecture is illustrated by the current widespread belief of the exact validity of the quantum mechanics for all possible conditions existing in nature. Yet the history of science teaches us that all scientific theories are a mere approximation of nature, thus admitting specific limitations. In this lecture, Professor Santilli first reviews the mathematical structure of quantum mechanics, then he shows that such a structure does indeed provide an exact representation of the structure of the hydrogen atom and other systems. And then he shows the impossibility for quantum mechanics as being exactly valid for more complex conditions such as those in the interior of particles, nuclei, and stars. A technical understanding of this lecture requires a knowledge of the covering Lie isotopic and Lie admissible mathematics and the related branches of hadronic mechanics and chemistry presented in subsequent lectures of levels 2, 3, and 4. Serious opinions on the limitations of quantum mechanics should be expressed only after acquiring a technical knowledge of the lectures of level 5 on the experimental verifications and industrial applications of hadronic mechanics and chemistry for new clean fuels and energies. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct pleasure and honor to introduce Professor Santilli for the delivery of such an important lecture for the advancement of fundamental scientific knowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, let me begin this second introductory lecture with an obvious statement namely that, um, that the advances and discoveries that have been permitted by quantum mechanics throughout the 20th century are simply astonishing, are beyond belief. I have written uh, several times in my works that uh, quantum mechanics has a majestic axiomatic structure and an impressive body of experimental verification. I would like to add that as a personal note that uh, that the discovery, the construction, and the verification of quantum mechanics is, uh, is simply um, incredible because an entire body <coughs> of new knowledge has been built by the master of the 20th century, such as Heisenberg, Schrodinger, Bohr, and so many others, that, uh, the, um, that they build a new mathematical structure, a complementary, compatible uh, me um, mechanics, uh, new experimental setups, all this construction has been, set, uh, has been uh, discovered by the human mind for something that we will never see, the atomic structure. And this is simply unbelievable. And then when you see the experimental verification, uh, then, uh, then everybody remains astonished. This has been the only word I can use when I discover all this during my PhD stu studies at the University of Torino back in the um, early 1960s. Very well. I shall also mention that, uh, the, the, that, uh, that, that this lecture and this title should be elaborated. We are, um, I'm uh, more technical, I am referring <laughs> to the limitations of the 20th century mathematical formulation of quantum mechanics and not to the axioms of quantum mechanics that, again, they are majestic in my view. In fact, the, the covering hadronic mechanics has been uh, by conception and technical implementation <coughs> has been based on the axiom of quantum mechanics, in, of course, in an abstract formulation. And we have merely <laughs> replaced the 20th century mathematics of quantum mechanics with a broader mathematics verifying, however, the same axiom in a different ways. Ladies and gentlemen, when there are limitations in physics, <laughs> in the 99% of the cases that I know, those limitations refer to the mathematics. Rarely the physics uh, takes part. This will be systematically the case throughout um, this lecture, 
because it will be the same for interior problem, the same for antimatter, the same of interior gravitation, etc., etc. The mathematics used in the 20th century uh, is insufficient for addressing this uh, rather complex uh, conditions of, of nature. So, the, but after having said um, all this, the, the, um, it is set in history, as it has been also recalled by, the, by, by, by our chairman, uh, John Pace, that all physical theories have limitations. So there are conditions under which they are exactly valid, but there are broader conditions in, in under which they are merely approximately valid. And in general, there are further more complex conditions in which uh, the, the uh, 20th century theory are inapplicable. Namely, they don't provide, they provide no quantitative results. This is uh, the, 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 the study of those three possibilities is the main objective of, um, of this lecture. But before starting, I would like to make, an, um, uh, to make the following comment that uh, out of my lecturing around the world, uh, for this particular lecture, I have selected in the introductory part, as you may have seen, the atomium in Brussels. Why the atomium? Well, because the, the atomium symb symbolizes the apotheosis of quantum uh, mechanics. Just the sheer size of the, of the atomium is an, um, is, a, is an appropriate illustration of the dimension of quantum mechanics in history. Keep in mind throughout this lecture that, uh, that um, we maintain the axiom of quantum mechanics. We are only talking about realization. Okay, with this understanding, let's, uh, let's uh, start uh, the lecture. So, um, first of all, let's see at the mathematical structure of quantum mechanics, because again, the mathematics sets the conditions of applicability and those of only approximate character. The mathematics is well known, only it is not uh, properly addressed and identified in uh, PhD courses because of unfortunate organized interest on uh, Einstein's special relativity and relativistic quantum mechanics that have to be denounced because they usually oppose um, the, the, the content of this lecture, they have opposed through decades, as it is well known in any case, they oppose not via, via technical objections published in referee journals, no. They oppose it via manipulation, abuse of academic authority, all performed under public, generally under public financial support. This type of behavior is not scientific, and has to be denounced. Otherwise, I become an accomplice, something it will never happen for me. Why such strong words? Ladies and gentlemen, because what I have, um, the lecture that I initiate today has very deep implications for our little planet. As it is known to everybody, we, um, we are now uh, experiencing increasingly alarming environmental problems. The only solutions of those problems is to discover basically new and clean uh, fuels and energies. This is well known. Now, what is also well known but not spoken, and I don't want to be part of that silence, is that all energy and fuels that, that, um, that could be conceived by Einstein's special relativity and quantum mechanics were all fully known by the middle of the past century. And they resulted all in being environmentally unacceptable, either because of the release of um, uh, harmful radiation or because of the release of radioactive waste. So therefore, the surpassing of quantum mechanics, the surpassing of Einstein's special relativity is mandatory for the very survival of our society, for the very survival of our little planet uh, navigating in this vast uh, universe. So therefore, any non-technical obstruction, objection, and that is any objection which is not published in referee journals, uh, which uh, therefore is political, must be denounced. Otherwise, this uh, due scientific process in the discovery and the develop of new <coughs> and, um, and the development of new clean energy will never acquire a, a sufficiently large uh, collegial participation. Finally, it should be indicated uh, that um, this process of uh, the for conceiving, formulating, 
testing and developing new clean energy and fuel has already been developed. That's why it took 50 years to, to, to present to reach the level of this uh, world lecture series. And this is available, has been published in referee journal. To understand them, however, you have to go through level one, level two, level three, level four, and finally level five, which is the experimental and the industrial side. So therefore, to colleagues who are uh, very quick in expressing uh, um, uh, uh, obstruction and opposition, just keep in mind that by doing so, you oppose the due scientific process for new clean fuels and energy. That's what it is. And that's what has to be stated. Very well. After a clear understanding that the objection to this lecture have to be published in referee journal rather than voiced in academic corridors, okay, then let's look at, the, let's begin uh, the lecture. Let's have a review again the obvious, the mathematical structure of quantum mechanics, but review it from a critical viewpoint, not with a applaudatory viewpoint. The, um, first of all, the mathematics underlying quantum mechanics is linear. It is well known, taught the first year graduate student. It is based on the theory of linear operator on a Hilbert space. The validity of this theory for numerous uh, systems in nature is beyond doubt. This is not the issue here. The, the, um, however, the issue is that the, any belief that the entire universe can be described with a linear theory, ladies and gentlemen, is corruption and has to be denounced as such because it's against the pursuit of new knowledge, period. And I want to be on record with those words, because if you use nice words to, deny, to, um, to, to describe political, political handling of science, this may appear complicity to a number of serious scholars. Okay, so let's review then the second uh, major uh, mathematical structure of uh, quantum mechanics, which is known as being local differential. Everybody, every physicist has uh, studied since the first year of graduate school the differential calculus. So therefore, the, the, um, what does it mean, the differential calculus? It means that uh, the topology of quantum mechanics, the Euclidean topology, the Zeeman topology of relativistic uh, quantum mechanics and the other topology, can only describe a finite number of dimensionless isolated points. And... Um, Again, this mathematical structure, the beauty of this topology, the, the differential calculus, they, uh, they permit an exact uh, representation of a number of systems, as we, we will see in a moment. However, the, the, the belief that the local uh, the differential uh, um, uh, topology, geometry, uh, algebra, etc., can describe all conditions existing in the universe, ladies and gentlemen, this belief is totally totally the, 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 has no scientific foundation at all. And if pushed to the limit with political maneuvering to prevent or oppose broadening of this mathematics, then we, we exit from science and we enter into the dark side of science, which has to be denounced. And I intend to denounce it in, in throughout this lecture, because otherwise, <laughs> otherwise I don't think the, um, the, we can have really have a scientific uh, process. Finally, the, um, the mathematics is uh, potential Hamiltonian. What does it mean? It means that um, the mathematics solely admit action at a distance, interaction derivable from a potential. This limitation is necessary from, uh, from the, the first and second, uh, first and second uh, structure, because if you have isolated points, iso dimensionless isolated points can only uh, experience interaction at a distance. Again, this is certainly the case, as we will see, soon see for the atomic structure of the uh, hydrogen atom in particular. But if you, um, if you think that the same, the same anybody who claims, any, uh, any qualified scientist under public financial support, claiming that, um, that the interaction of a proton in the core of a star are also solely Hamiltonian, ladies and gentlemen, we exit from, uh, from science and we enter anything else except science. Proton is a, la a large structure for particles um, uh, dimension, is uh, hyper dense. When it is in the core of a star, immersed in such an ultra dense medium, the idea that all those interactions necessarily are uh, solely of potential type, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> my guy cannot be part of that scheme against society. 
<coughs> okay, we, the, the enlargement is of course debatable. Yes, <laughs> that is part of the scientific process for the enlargement. What is the broadening <coughs> of this mathematics? That has to be debated. But uh, the denial of the need is corruption, scientific corruption, generally perpetrated under public financial support. That's what's been going on for decades. Very well, from this, uh, from, uh, this structure we can immediately uh, the, um, uh, derive the main conclusion of this lecture, namely that this mathematical structure permits an exact representation of, uh, of all conditions allowing um, the, 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 uh, the abstraction of particles as being point-like. These are called the conditions of the exterior dynamical problem. Namely, we're talking about uh, particles and electromagnetic waves propagating in empty space. However, this, uh, the interior, exterior dynamical problem is a very small represents a very small uh, number of, uh, of events in nature. The, in general, the, 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 the general case is that of the interior dynamical problem. And in any case, the exterior is a particular case of the interior. In the interior dynamical problem, we're talking about extended, therefore deformable, as we will see, particles moving and electromagnetic waves moving within physical media. Remember from lecture one, where you cannot put the inertial reference frame. You're going to put an inertial reference frame inside the sun. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a limit in which you know, the preferred theory can be pushed. And then, then, of course, there is a loss of credibility. So basically, this is the main result of the lecture. OK, I have organized the, 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 this lecture in three levels to follow this historical uh, evolution. First, let's see the limitation at, in atomic physics. Then we'll pass to limitation in nuclear physics. And finally, we will look at the limitations in particle physics. Very well, let's start with uh, the part one, namely the limitation. Again, I have to insist the limitation of the 20th century mathematical formulation of quantum mechanics in the atomic structure. You will, you will um, interested colleagues will understand my statement that the axiomatic structure of quantum mechanics remains exact, but they have to learn isomathematics, genomathematics, Lie isotopic theory, Lie admissible theory, the, the various mechanical formulations, and the experimental verifications to understand how, how we succeeded in preserving the axiom of quantum mechanics while broadening its realization. Very well, let's start with um, what has fascinated me throughout my entire life, namely the, um, the magnificent achievement of an exact representation of the, um, of the phenomenology surrounding the, 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 the hydrogen atom. Here <coughs> I represent the de Broglie conception that, uh, that, um, the, lay, you know, the perimeter of an orbit has to be an integer multiple of the wavelength of the electron to achieve stability. You can see the quantization from here. This because you can have another orbit, but that's not necessarily there is a quantum jump to achieve, to achieve the same condition of, um, of, uh, of, of stability. And, uh, this, is, of course, is an historical point surpassed by many other formulations. And I have to reformulate, of course, the Schrodinger equation because they are indeed historical and they have a towering <coughs> place <coughs> in the history of science. <coughs> the, I want to bring to your attention on, and this is of course the, the uh, celebrated uh, spectrum of the binding energy that, um, that per has permitted an incredible, uh, the representation of spectral line with an incredible accuracy. Uh, this, uh, I have to bring your attention on one point however here, the minus point, minus the binding energy is negative. I repeat, this is something taken for obvious, not in this lecture, <laughs> as you will see soon. What does it mean? It means that basically that, that there is a little mass defect. If you take the mass of the proton, the mass of the, or the rest of the energy of the proton, the rest of the energy of the electron, when they combine in the atomic hydrogen atom, the rest energy of the hydrogen atom is less than the sum of the constituents. That's basically the idea of, uh, of a mass defect. This is in the realized in the atomic structure. You will see it better in the nuclear structure. And this is, it is negative. Under, those, um, uh, under that condition, quantum mechanics is magnificently uh, exact and everything works beautifully. 
I have to remember the spectral line, the Lyman line. I have been a member of um, Lyman Laboratory of Physics on the, with support from the, the Department of Energy. It was a great honor for my life. And the Balmer line, they are represented with an incredible accuracy. This is a view of the spectral, uh, the spectrum of the hydrogen atom. Again, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I am astonished. I would, I was Schrodinger, Eisenberg, <laughs> of course, Dirac and Fermi could achieve such an exact representation. Again, as I mentioned in the introduction, without ever seeing the atom, the hydrogen atom, just by imagination. And this gives them um, uh, uh, gives credit to, the, to their colossal statue in, in history. After having said so, however, now we start with um, limitation, in this case, politics. Politics and what? One of the most important equations of the 20th century, which is Dirac equation. Now, most of, the, of you will say that do not, do not know the technical, technical aspect. Would say, uh, Dr. Santilli, you have gone banana. Well, <laughs> just listen first and then publish this what i'm about to say has been published in referee journals and so publish your objection to be credible in referee journals okay what is the statement the statement which i, I was impo it was imposed on me since in my graduate uh, the first day of my graduate studies is that the rack equations represent careful about the wording the rack equation represents one elementary particles, the electrons, with spin one half in a way fully compatible with Einstein's special relativity. Ladies and gentlemen, both statements are politics, especially if proffered by experts, namely by people who, are, who have a technical knowledge to qualify as experts. Let's see why. These things are known and published in referee journal. First of all, Let's look at the, 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 these are the gamma matrices. Now, the, um, now uh, I, I, to be a theoretical physicist, the first thing that um, I did to acquire a technical knowledge of Lie theory. So that as is expected for, for any theoretical physicist. Now, then they should know that there exists no four dimensional, irreducible representation of the SU2 spin symmetry that characterizes spin one half. Therefore, the uh, Dirac gamma matrix cannot represent in, for any in any technical way uh, a, a, an elementary particle with spin one half. Keep in mind that since the, the electron is elementary, it must be represented with an irreducible representation of the Poincaré symmetry. Otherwise, we have to change the entire physics of the 20th century. Okay, so we have difficult. So there, the, the statement. The Dirac equation represents one, one pa elementary uh, particle with spin one half has no technical foundation. I do not see the here, the, I do see the, the sigma, yes, the poly sigma, yes, they represent spin one half. But uh, we are talking about the entire equation, not poly equation. Okay. Finally, but immediately, of course, we have to adapt, the, 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 there is politics in the lit here. So there is, uh, or we have to uh, achieve compatibility with special relativity. So how do we do? Well, uh, we look for a redu reducible representation. But ladies and gentlemen, here again, where, where statement, political statement can be denounced technically as being uh, political, because there exists no reducible four-dimensional representation of the, of the SU2 spin algebra with the structure of, gamma of Dirac gamma matrices. So let me repeat for clarity, hoping to, to minimize uh, misinterpretation. There exists no irreducible four-dimensional representation of the SU2 spin uh, algebra that can characterize spin one half. The only one must have two, must have two dimensions. Then um, also there exists no four, uh, reducible four-dimensional representation of the SU2 spin algebra that has the structure of Pauli, uh, of the uh, Dirac equation. So let's look at uh, the structure of this equation and see why. Well, you see the Pauli matrices, you see, they start here. You see the unit, the basic unit of the, um, of the Lie algebra of the SU2 sim spin symmetry, which is the, the two by two dimensional. And then you see this, um, you see the, 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 the poly matrices uh, there. So the, definitely you do have a spin, spin one half there. Yes, oh yes, for sure. But let's look at the other one. The other one, look at here, there's a minus. And look on the left. 
What you see here, you see an anterior mission, anterior mission conjugation of the Lie algebra of the SU2 spin symmetry. And ladies and gentlemen, that's where you lose compatibility with special, uh, total compatibility with special relativity. Why? Because um, to achieve compatibility of, uh, of, with this structure, with uh, any uh, relativity, you need a relativity to represent the spin one half. And you need a, a conjugate structure, a conjugate relativity, a relativity conjugated on the anti-hermeticity. This is outside the structure of uh, Einstein special relativity. Conclusion, the, um, the, this, the, the, the Dirac equation does indeed represent particles with two particles, the Kronecker product of two particles, or a particle with spin one half and an antiparticle with, um, also with spin one half, each one existing in different spaces there, and so on. The, um, to under, go deeper into this topic and I recommend for their own, for their own sake, I recommend colleagues, Prior to venture judgment with no technical knowledge of what I'm talking about, they should study the isodual theory of antimatter. There have been thousands of pages have been published in the field, beginning with uh, the new mathematics, anti-hermitian mathematics, so that we can quantitatively represent the, um, the structure and then go all the way to the experimental verifications and, and so on. Unfortunately, I cannot enter into technical detail um, but I will in the in the, the separate issue the lecture dedicated to anti antimatter. Okay, so now let's go now to pass to the helium. Helium again is another area in which now the politics is, there is a crescendo of politics if we go higher and higher in the atomic structure. In the helium, um, there is widespread spread belief that there is uh, indeed quantum mechanics provide an exact representation. I want to warn um, colleagues in, in good faith to ask for the equations and look at the equations. And then you will see that, um, that yes, <laughs> I have seen them. Some of them, they do provide an exact representation of the helium, but, but throwing arbitrary parameters, form factors, arbitrary functions, they are all fitted from experimental data, and then quantum mechanics is claimed as being exact. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a scientific process. This is political manipulation to achieve predetermined objective. Let's go a little bit deeper into the situation and cut the political fat out. If we want to remain physicists, we have to look at facts and then introduce the most plausible um, interpretation irrespectively of any preferred or beloved theory. Just by looking at the structure, what you see as this is well known the helium is the first implementation of the Pauli exclusion principle. This, this is well we will know. Here you have, um, uh, you can see two electrons in the same orbit, each electron prohibiting the other to have the same quantum numbers. Let's go a little bit deeper into this situation. Ladies and gentlemen, how, um, how for God's sake can it be possible that one electron prohibit the other electrons in the same orbit to have the same quantum number that he has, and vice versa. How can this be possible? The only possibility is that there is an interaction. There has to be an action, call it an action. If you don't want, if you want to avoid epistemological dispute that are totally inessential on wording, I'm interested in equations, not wording. The, the, um, the, 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 if you don't want to let's, let's use the action. There has to be an action, I, mean, I call it interaction, between the two electrons. So otherwise, the, the, otherwise we have to enter into, to enter into theology. But ladies and gentlemen, can this interaction to be a potential type? Absolutely not. The moment you represent, you try, this has been tried, you try to represent Pauli exclusion principle why a potential energy, an exchange, a Feynman exchange of electrons, oh my, you end up with total non-physical nonsense because you are totally outside, then any, you lose any representation capability of the spectrum of the helium, which is represented to a considerable extent by quantum mechanics, only it is not represented in an exact form. Now, then the only possibility that you remain is that the, the interaction between the two electrons at the foundation of Pauli exclusion principle has to be non, 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 has to be non-linear, non-local, and above all, non-potential, therefore, non-Hamiltonian, therefore, outside the capabilities of quantum mechanics. Conclusion, quantum mechanics does indeed include Pauli exclusion principle. This is obvious, been from day one, from the first day of the formulation of by Pauli. 
However, quantum mechanics has failed to produce a quantitative interpretation of why this happened. What's the mechanism of the Pauli principle? And um, uh, you should also know that one of the central objective of, of hadronic mechanics is precisely that of achieving a quantitative interpretation of the Pauli exclusion principle. Uh, in fact, quantum mechanics permits a, a very good approximation of the spectral line, spectral line, uh, spectral emission of the helium, indeed, and uh, which cannot be denied. We are talking about the, at this level a relatively small deviation. However, you should know that um, you should know that one of the main objectives of hadronic mechanics is the achievement of a quantitative, that is, with the equation, not just hypothesis, conjecture, hyperbole. No, the equations. To, um, to understand um, uh, what's the mechanism underlying uh, the power poly exclusion principle, because the same mechanism, the same interaction uh, that are expected to be non-linear, non-local, and non-Hamiltonian, are, are uh, also occurring in the Cooper pair in superconductivity, in the valence coupling, in, 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 in chemistry, and in many other um, structures. But let's go a little bit deeper. Why quantum mechanics has limit, limitations of the 20th century mathematical realization of the abstract axiom of quantum mechanics? Just look at this. The, the, according to um, experimental evidence, the, 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 in photodisintegration of the helium, the two, uh, the two electrons are they spit out uh, together, bonded together, of course in singlet, to, uh, because of the Pauli principle, um, but bonded together so strongly that they even uh, um, a tunnel through a, um, a potential barrier that they come out of a potential barrier still bonded together. Ladies and gentlemen, two identical electrons are predicted to be repelled in, by quantum mechanics. They have same charge. So therefore, how can it be that they are bonded together? Here we start touching one of the, one of the lim most important limitations of quantum uh, mechanics that here you see for the Pauli principle but then you will see it again um, magnified to its extreme in, uh, in chemistry for the molecular bond. This will be the topic of the next uh, section. Now, if you go deeper, here you what you see, you see this is the real interaction that I call non-non-non. Namely, the, the, also this is the symbol of the Institute for Basic Research, <laughs> that the two overlapping circles that, um, in, in which you can see an, a, a volume of overlapping. So um, this volume is not, not only the, the interaction there, not only a nonlinear careful in the wave function that depend on the number of powers of the wave function, but they are also um, non-local integrating in a volume. So you see this volume in, uh, of uh, mutual penetration cannot be exactly reduced to a finite number of isolated points. So therefore, just by looking at this, you can see that quantum mechanics can at best be approximately valid. Finally, those interaction are contact. They have no potential. And that's why this interaction the, the, the allowed the preservation of the good interpretation by quantum mechanics of the helium um, spectral line without uh, disrupting them in the event the interaction there will be potential. But we will see this in the applications of uh, hadronic mechanics. Let's get going a, um, a little bit deeper into the situation. At least you have a feeling what's going on. Well, um, the question is, what is the only quantitative representation of this uh, new interaction, uh, the unknown interaction, uh, which is underlines Pauli principle, underlines the Cooper pair, underlines the valence bond, etc. There is only one answer, and there is no, no other. If you have any other answer, please let me know, because I will be very grateful. I recommend you for the Nobel Prize. Um, the only uh, answer is that, um, that you need um, a non-unitary broadening of quantum mechanics. Why? Because uh, the moment you assume by conception, as well as uh, evidence overlapping, that the interactions are non-Hamiltonian, what does it mean? It means that cannot be entirely represented with the Hamiltonian. It means you have extra terms outside the Hamiltonian. But then any um, interaction which is non-Hamiltonian necessarily there are theorems in that respect. I'll be happy to provide um, uh, mathematical, uh, very rigorous mathematical reference published in referee journals on this point. <coughs> the only possibility is that the theory be non-unitary. And that's precisely the reason why the we proposed, I proposed in 1978, when I was at Harvard, with um, the support of the Department of Energy, I proposed the construction 
of uh, Adronic mechanics as non-unitary covering of quantum mechanics. The, the, as a unitary realization of the axiom of quantum mechanics by the so-called isotopies, isostopos, in the Greek sense of preserving the axioms. At that point, I have to denounce another, um, another aspect. I have seen throughout the decades, oh, Dr. Santilli, send me a, a, a little paper. I'm very interested. Show me a paper. I want to learn. Uh, give me 15, 20. They give you the, the limitation, 10 pages. Pfft. Well, these are people or uh, colleagues that have never heard the word, <coughs> the name Adronic Mechanics. <coughs> so the, their dream is, oh, oh, with a little paper, I learn what this is. I can, and I can judge. It would be the same as that, that, with, um, that you, have to, in 10 pages, have to present to a physicist. I never heard the word quantum mechanics, never heard the word, you have to present to that paper the mathematical structure, the physical structure, the experimental verification, the prediction, etc. in 10 pages, forget about. It's that mentality that the people are accustomed nowadays, this universe, tiny little uh, incremental advances over established theory that you can then in, present them in 10 pages. But uh, a new mechanics, forget about it, ladies and gentlemen, this is totally outside reality. Because um, for, let me give you a glimpse. Uh, Non-unitary theory are known to violate causality. So I certainly am not lost my 50 years of my life uh, after the theory that violates causality, ladies and gentlemen, no. So just the resolution of the problem of how to verify causality, what is the mathematics that allows this type of formulation, <laughs> has requested um, 50 years of work and thousands of pages, and then the mechanical, and then uh, the mechanical part, and then the experimental part. The conclusion, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this you can learn this only if you are serious, as you are, most of you are. Indeed, the great majority of the physics community is composed by serious physicists. In this case, they have to sit and study a, hundred, a thousand, at least a few thousand pages. Then, to acquire the necessary technical knowledge, the mathematical physics, experimental level, to then as a condition to proffer judgment. Very well, <coughs> let me pass now with the growing of the, di the dimension of the, of the atom, there is a, a progress corresponding progressive increase of the, of the politics. That, that there is a claim by uh, in even uh, some of the most uh, reputable journal, the editor, they will impose on you, oh, quantum mechanics, oh, you can add another extra fun factor, uh, Dr. Santilli, you can add, add another parameter, so you get compatibility. Ladies and gentlemen, the fact remains that the, uh, with the increase of the dimension of the atom, there is a pro corresponding progressive increase of departure of experimental data from the prediction of the theory. The only plausible interpretation, which since it is very plausible, must be investigated to prevent um, exiting from science and entering into political manipulation, is that with the increase of the, um, of the dimension, the, the uh, quantum jumps become smaller, as is well known, the orbit, the distance in between orbit becomes smaller and more, and therefore the non-non interaction becomes more and more dominant. I mean, parti with particular respect <coughs> to the uh, particular respect to the non-local integral mutual penetration of uh, wave packet. There are also disturbances on on the pole exclusion principle, of course, that have been sus suspected. At, uh, with very heavy, uh, very heavy at the structure, atomic structure, very heavy, heavy particularly in the peripheral, peripheral behavior. But uh, the experiments were never conducted, to, to, in my opinion, at least not in a way that I consider um, true science, namely without manipulations of the of the uh, of the data. Finally, the 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 um, the, the, the one of the most um, impressive, if not um, convincing, um, uh, evidence. Uh, establishing the limitations of quantum mechanics in face of the complexity of nature is the inability of the theory to represent all spectral lines of the sun in about 100 years of attempt and a river of public money. In fact, only as one, uh, as one indication, there are spectral lines that require an orbit smaller than Bohr's orbit, I repeat, requires an uh, orbit that are absolutely not predictable via quantum mechanics. And this is per se sufficient to establish to com the complexity of the structure of the sun are co as compared to clear limitations of the mathematical structure of quantum mechanics, namely its linearity, 
locality an Hamiltonian character. There is no doubt in the, in the, in the, for any, uh, any serious scientist that the, the next step, of course, quantum mechanics has permitted and, and is permitting a first, yes, a first approximation of the structure of the, of, of the sun. When presented as a first approximation, this is clean science, science that should be respected. The point that where, um, where we exit from science, when it is claimed as a final description, namely the end of evolution and discovery by the human mind. That <coughs> I will never be part of.